Now, most of us know Joel chapter 2, and, you know, it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, but after what? And so the Lord took me a little bit before that. So if you have your Bible, go ahead with me to Joel chapter 2, and I will start in... Now, this is all about the Lord's mercy restoring Zion and restoring Israel. Now, how many of you guys know there's so many prophetic layers to Scripture, right? Just because this is talking about literal Israel four or 5,000, you know, three, 4,000 years ago doesn't mean that it can't apply to his church today. All his promises are yes and amen, and there's lots of prophetic uh, layers to Scripture. So Joel chapter 2 is about the Lord's mercy coming and restoring things that have been stolen, and then his spirit being poured out. But what really stuck out to me was uh, Joel chapter 2, starting in verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Now it almost sounds like God saying, oh yeah, I just totally destroyed you and now I'll build you up again. Well, in a sense, because see, it's when people want their own desires or their disobedience to the Lord, he hands them over to what they think they want for a time so that they'll turn back to him. Otherwise, we would never need faith. We would never even need intimacy with God, you know. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord who has dealt wondrously with you and you will not be ashamed. And you will know that I am in the midst of you. Now, I was, I'm going to go to the New King James. I had that, I think, in my phone. I was reading this in the New King James, and I started getting a revelation on this, but I want to release this into the atmosphere of Myrtle Beach tonight because I feel like this is going to be a place where God um, restores time, energy, and uh, business deals, family, all kinds of stuff that people have lost. I was, I was really feeling that today. And this is one of the ways that he, do, that he does that kind of restoration. In fact, some of you that are in the building, some of you watching, now this is not just for Myrtle Beach. I just felt like to release this tonight into the atmosphere here. And obviously you guys take it back. Y'all take it back. Y'all take it back and you take it back, you know, if you're, wherever you're watching online. Um, but I felt like the Lord said there, it's even going to seem like deja vu in, at, at different times. And then you're going to realize that it's the, it's the spirit of the Lord and not just some deja vu. You're almost going to feel like you're reliving a certain thing that you lost out on some years ago. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, am I reliving that right now? But, but, and you are because the anointing of God has come on you and he's going to restore that time that you feel like or you lost or that maybe you really did lose. Um, so I'm going to read this in the New King James, and it says this, Joel 2, 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. Now, the swarming locusts are made up of these three types of locusts. This, this, this just hit me, right? Right when we were, like, going into worship time. What kind of swarming things? What does it mean when something swarms? When, when you're in an atmosphere where lies are swarming around you, you you. It's like, I don't know if there's a word, not give into it, but you succumb to those lies. You know, if you're, like, if you're raised in an atmosphere where it's lies, 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 by the time you're a teenager or in your 20s, you've succumbed to a lot of those lies, you know. Well, as believers, if we were developed and discipled, hopefully we were discipled. There's not a whole lot of discipleship going on anymore, but we're going to change that. Um, if we were developed or discipled, um, under uh, some, some lies mixed with truth or under religious condemnation, we're going to succumb to a lot of that and we're going to struggle in our adult years um, with that kind of religious condemnation. Um, and I felt like God said, when something swarms, it envelops. You ever been to Alaska in the summer? Lee, you went with me in the summer. How are those mosquitoes? Good Lord. They're the, they're the Alaska State bird. They are terrible. They're terrible. I mean, black clouds and not glory clouds. <laughs> Demonic. <laughs> black clouds. They are huge and they bite 
the bejesus out of you, and you can't, it's terrible. It's just terrible. And like half the bug dope, they call it bug dope up there, half the bug spray don't even work for these things. It's crazy. When something swarms around you, it envelops you, and you can succumb to things. And so I saw this happening to the church. I saw the church being swarmed by um, dead law-keeping, religious performance, um, lies that grace is a license to sin, you know, all of this stuff. And there were three types of locusts in Joel chapter 2, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. The world, the flesh, and the devil. It's crazy. You always have these. That's the unholy trinity. (laughs) Thank God we got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as the antidote to the world, the flesh, and the devil, right? But you've got these three types of locusts, the ones that crawl. They're a little bit more sneaky. The consuming one. What What does the devil come to do? Kill, steal, destroy. Crawling, consuming, and chewing. Steal, kill, destroy. And I felt like, and I want to release this to you guys online and, I, and, and you guys in the room. There are literally parts of you in your physical body and in your dreams, like your dream, the dream of God that he put in you, your calling, your destiny, that you feel like there are parts of it that the devil has literally chewed away over the years like a termite and that there's not a support beam left. Now let's look at the promises of God here. You're going to eat in plenty and be satisfied. You're going to praise the name of the Lord. This is a promise for those that have been swarmed by the, by the crawlers, the consumers, and the chewers, by the world and the flesh and the devil. This is a promise. So if you are in this category, if the enemy has come to steal or kill or destroy, if the locust has come to crawl or consume or to chew, then this applies to you. You will eat in plenty. And you will be satisfied. Jesus, we are satisfied on you. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And you will not be put to shame. Then you will know that I am in the midst of Israel. Now, who's true Israel? Jesus is true Israel. He wandered in the desert. He fasted in the desert. It's just like natural Israel. He he literally fulfilled. This is part of the detox program too but he literally fulfilled Israel in their natural state as well like he was the prophetic Israel was a prophetic picture in a sense of Jesus except he did it right where Israel went wrong you get what I'm saying but I want you to look I want you to see this right now this is this is so crazy I'm going to reply I'm going to put this in a new covenant lens for you and I'm going to take away um, then you will know that I am in the midst of Israel where is Jesus now he's in us then you will know that it's me living out of the midst of you. Then you'll know that I am living out of you. Then you'll know that you are dead and it's me living in you now. When? When we get a revelation that he's dealt wonderfully with us, the finished work of the cross of Jesus, you will eat in plenty, you will be satisfied, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God. That is if the devil's still stolen and killed and destroyed in your life. And and then you're going to see what I've accomplished for you, you're going to be satisfied on that. You're going to render yourself dead to sin and realize it's me living out of you now. And you're going to know that I am in your midst. I'm putting this in a new covenant prophetic lens for you. Now check this out. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people will not be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. In other words, I'm putting a prophetic layer on this, okay? Oh, man, I feel the glory right now. When we realize that the world, the flesh, and the devil has stolen, killed, destroyed, chewed away at us, crawled, and swarmed, and brought lies, when we realize that that was our reality, But what Jesus has done and who Jesus is becomes greater than that reality. And we realize who he is in us and what he's accomplished in us. We will be satisfied. I'm satisfied. But you know what I love to say? I'm satisfied on Jesus, but I'm desperately hungry to see everyone else come to that same satisfaction. But that doesn't mean complacent, though. 
That doesn't mean, oh, I don't ever need to hear a word from God again. It doesn't mean, well, God spoke to us through his son, like it says in Hebrews, so therefore he's deaf mute from now on. No, he's not. He's not a mute. You know, he still speaks. He still longs to share his heart with us. That's what I love about the prophetic ministry. And it'll come to pass after you realize that it's me living in you. After you realize that, yes, sin did come and orphan you. Yes, the world, the flesh, and the devil did come and jack you up. But before any of that could happen, I'd already overcome the world. I'd already been crucified from the foundation of the world for you, as you. And now, now that you realize, yes, you were messed up, but before that even happened, I had a plan and I took care of it. Now that you know me, you will not be put to shame. You're going to eat in plenty. You're going to be at the feasting table. You will stay satisfied. And after you realize this, I'm going to pour out my spirit on everything and everyone everywhere. In other words, I see the way sometimes things are worded in Scripture, uh, it, it leaves things up to debate in a sense. How exactly will God do that? How did he do that? He did that in Acts 2, didn't he? I mean, he, it started there like he poured out his spirit. And all flesh, meaning people in different lang people that spoke different languages understood the gospel in their own language. But was that it? It just ended there? Or is he still pouring his spirit out on all flesh right now? And is he still going like this? Come on, get out of that. Get out. Or is, or is it more us, our eyes being gradually opened more and more to how God's spirit is moving and, and brooding? You got what I'm saying? And so I see this as when we explore the depths of the, the glory and his grace in community, how can the church and society not be reformed? See, we've, we've talked about revival for a really, really long time, for decades and decades and decades. I mean, we've been talking about revival in this country since the, the mid-1800s or before, you know. But there has to come a point where revival, the, it's a means to an end. Reformation is what comes out of revival. If we're all revived and we're like, yay, sparky Jesus, and then we just don't do anything, you know. It, it brings reformation. It brings us to reform where every, the way that God is shifting us and causing us to come alive and changing us, we, we allow it to reform us on the inside and reform the way we do things. But then a lot of times what happens is we pretty package it and we make it a formula. And then when God tries to do something new, we're like, oh, no, no, we, we, have, we, we have the formula over here. Thank you, though. <laughs> no, we need, we need reformation. But it starts in the church. Judgment starts in the house of God. And then it goes out to society. God's raising up supernatural reformers full of his spirit. And what are they going to look like? Well, the sons and daughters will prophesy. Let me, let me tell you, that's you all. You're all sons and daughters. You're all sons and daughters. Your old men shall dream dreams. I'm bald now, so I guess I fall into that category, old men dream dreams. The young men shall see visions. I guess I won't see visions anymore. Almost 40 here. And also, on my, on my men's servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into blood. Before the great and awesome day of the Lord. Well, what does all that mean? Well, it's called apocalyptic literary style. And uh, you have to take the Bible school because I can't go into all that right now. Um, and I don't have all the answers, by the way, either. But, but I have studied it a bit. Before the coming of the great awesome day of the Lord it shall come to pass. Whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know that was a heresy to people for thousands of years. God's just not going to save anybody that calls on him. We're the chosen, Right? How many of us still act like that today or still hear that attitude today, right? Nah, man, we're mouthpieces of God. We need to be in Acts 14 people that the people that are cursing God, spitting on us and stoning us for preaching the gospel, we walk right back into that city and we say, no, no, no. God said anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. And the fact that you're so stirred up with this gospel tells me he's drawing you. He's drawing you to himself. Amen. Oh, glory. Okay. I will restore the years the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. Lord, I thank you that in the areas where our minds, our emotions, our trust, whatever it is, has been betrayed by the world and by when we thought we could trust our own desires, but we weren't yielding to your desire. It wasn't, we didn't have a revelation of you living in us. It was, it was about us living in us. 
or maybe it was the enemy tempting us with thoughts. Lord, I thank you that there is an army rising up of people that walk back into that same situation but armed with the power of Almighty God, ready to pull down every stronghold to the obedience of Christ, not because of their flesh, not, not in their own power, but because of he that lives in them, because of he that dwells in them. God, I thank you so much for restoring the years, even from the COVID pandemic, that people feel like they've lost, that have been stolen from them. Times of joy and affection and maybe um, progress with their business, and it was, it was all stolen. Lord, I thank you that you're restoring the years that the swarms of lies have come and tried to steal. And Lord, I thank you that we remain fervent and steadfast, preaching the word of your grace. And signs and wonders follow us everywhere we go. God's showing me a jaw right now, like a jaw, something with the jaw on one side. I don't know which side, but either where it connects by the ear or down here, like a jaw issue. Lord, we speak to that jaw right now. We command it to be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. We command that jaw to work properly in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Nerves, nerve damage, nerve damage. Father, I thank you for touching nerve damage right now. Even anybody watching online, nerve damage in Jesus' name. Thank you that's being healed right now. And I feel like the Lord's saying you've given up. And I, I, f I know, I know, no one else knows, and I don't know who this is to, it's for somebody, but I hear the Lord saying, no one else knows, but I know that you've given up in your heart because I'm in your heart and I can see, um, I can see the, uh, the clock has stopped or, or something like, I see that this clock of destiny has kind of run dry and stopped and the Lord's saying, I see that you've given up. But I hear the Lord saying, if you'll allow me, I'll rekindle you right now. If you'll allow me, I'll rekindle you right now. And I see, I see like shrooms, like the drug, shrooms, and, and, and paraphernalia, um, but specifically shrooms. And I, hear, I see the Lord saying, I'll be your mushrooms if you give it up. If you give it up, I'll be much better than your shrooms. But you've got to trust me. And I hear the Lord saying... You've, you have knelt down and had to carry the burden of much toxicity over the years, and it became too much for you to bear. So you've turned aside to fables and fairy tales, but I am here to set you free, truly free, that you wouldn't bow the knee to fairy tales and fables and buckle under the pressure of the world and the flesh and the devil. I'm here to restore you. I'm here to restore you to family. This is where you belong, in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I feel like the Lord's saying right now, he's just reiterating, even with the tongues, I restore, I'm the Lord that restores I'm the Lord that sets free. None of the locusts can ever set you free. Only I set free. The locust only destroys and takes away, but I will add unto you peace and goodwill toward men. I will add unto you the anointing that you would know the truth. The truth would set you free. I'll add unto you the anointing that you know things and that you're not depending on men to hear the voice of God. 1 John 2.20 I hear the Lord saying, I will fully equip you for the days ahead, for the evil day and for the glorious day. I will equip you right now. I'll equip you with righteousness right now. Right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. Thank you, God. You're so good. And I hear the Lord saying that I'm about to spark a momentum in your life, in the spirit. I'm about to spark a momentous, joyful phenomenon 
It's going to add momentum to you. And you're going to have momentum in your walk with me like you've never had it before. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to light you up. I'm going to light you up because you've allowed me to, uh, to mold you as the potter molds the clay. I will now paint you and I will design you and I will refresh you. And I will present you to the world with my light coming out of you. And they will not be able to deny the light that you carry. Because it doesn't, it's not a light that can be activated by an earthly source. It's a light that is only activated by Jesus Christ living in you. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to shine through you in a new and a fresh way if you'll trust me. If you'll trust me, I will shine through you in a new and fresh way, says the Lord. I hear the Lord saying, you've known the heavy weight of burden, but I will, I will replace your heavy weight of burden with heavy weight of my glory. And you will again have a spirit of heaviness, but not the one the world brings, not the one the locusts bring, not the one the devil brings, not the one the flesh brings. You will again have the weight of heaviness of my glory on you. And you won't say, where did the glory go? You won't say, what happened to the days that I heard from God? You won't say, what happened to the days that I felt like I was connected into the source? You won't say, what happened to the days that I felt like I had victory over sin? You won't say, what happened to the days that I feel like I was singing a song, that there was a song coming out of my life? And I have, what happened to those days? I'm dry, I'm dry. And I hear the Lord saying, you're not dry. As of this moment, you'll never be dry again if you trust me. I will fill you and I will sustain you, I hear the Lord saying. But I also see the Lord putting a, a, a white watch with many diamonds and gems. It's a beautiful watch from heaven. And he's putting it on the wrists of his saints and he's saying, but there is a time frame. There's a window. And I hear him saying, I have all this for you, but there is a window. There is a window. And I'm asking you to trust me before the window's up. Doesn't mean you won't be able to be saved or something like that. But there's a window for special assignments for this refreshing, for this reformation that God's doing right now. And he's saying, let me put this watch on your wrist so that you don't forget that you are now in my time. You're not in the world's time anymore. You're in my time. It's not a window that's just up and I kill you like the world. It's not a carnal thing, but it puts you in my time. And I hear the Lord saying from now on, I want my people to be on my time. It's not on their time. Heaven doesn't work on their time. It works on my time. And I hear the Lord saying, it will be my time on the earth. And when it's, when it's my time, revival and reformation are natural. They come out of thin air when it's my time. Be in my window. Be in my time. Your life is but a vapor, but my time is forever. My time with you will be forever, even though your earthly life is but a vapor. My time. You're on my time now, I hear the Lord saying. 